Hello and welcome to another episode of Generative Geek. Today's episode is about ChromaDB. ChromaDB is a vector database which is used to store embeddings when you are building generative AI apps. Um, so far in the series on OpenAI in embeddings, we have covered embeddings extensively uh, where we have covered how to create embeddings, how to use them, how to visualize them, and even use cases like you know search product recommendations zero shot classifications have also been covered if you have not gone through those videos my recommendation is that you have a look at them it's part of our open ai embeddings playlist um, one important thing is that you know while we have been doing a lot of embeddings and creating them and then using them for various use cases all our embeddings have been ephemeral so far we haven't really stored them anywhere so in today's video, what we'll be doing is we'll be making use of ChromaDB to store our embeddings. I'll quickly walk you through how you can install ChromaDB, how you can then go on and create your uh, documents and you know then those documents can be uh, ingested into ChromaDB. How can you look at the various collections within ChromaDB, um, then go on querying and a lot of it and I'll also run you through we'll, we'll we'll first do a very basic example then we'll pick some netflix database and see how we can make use of the netflix database to actually store data into chroma db and then use that to query uh, stuff it'll be an interesting session please do watch the video in full to completely understand how to build these use cases um, i'm sure that you know you will learn something new something useful let's go on so what we are going to do is now we'll first start by building an environment uh, on I'm using visual source visual code and uh, here if you want to build an environment create a file called requirements.txt and you should have chroma db open ai and python dot env as libraries that will be will require for our environment next what I'll do is I'll just go into chroma uh, a python file python jupyter file that I have created a notebook um, and I'm just going to press command shift P I'm on a Mac command shift P now gives me an option to go out and select an existing in interpreter or create an environment I'm going to create an environment here it'll be a virtual env um, it's up to you you can create a virtual env or a, or a conda I'm going with virtual env um, and then select the Python version I have Python 3.11.9 I'll use that now what happens is VS Code will ask you if there are any dependencies that you already have and we because we have requirements.txt it can read that hey there is a requirement.txt we'll select that what this will do is when it is creating the environment it will also install all these packages right so so we don't have to then once the environment is created go out and install the packages uh, again uh, this will take a while let it finish uh, and then you know we'll be able to begin our uh, coding okay so now that the environment is created what we'll do is we can quickly go into the terminal uh, I'll say new terminal I can see dot VNV already listed here in brackets that means it's already selected that environment and I can do a pip freeze pip freeze will tell me whether all of the packages that we had listed out are whether they are installed or not we had chroma db and i can see chroma db listed so so those packages are now installed next step for us is very simple what we'll do is we'll start importing all the necessary libraries so i'll first import os sorry this is plain text i'll move it to python import os and this is like a code along so feel free to pause the video code along uh, next we'll import chroma db and then uh, I'll just quickly run these two cells, this cell, just to see if the imports are working fine, right? So it did go through. No, it's asking which one, and I'll say VN. Uh, okay, this is a new one, so it's it's going to install IPy kernel as well. Um, and now that it is installed, it's running the cell. Uh, it can take a little while for this cell to run because this is like the first fresh install but, and the installation went through. Now Chroma offers, uh, uh, once before I get into actual Chroma DB implementation, let me quickly tell you that you know Chroma DB can be made to work in two ways. There is a local way and there is a client server way. As part of this tutorial, we'll focus on the local method. 
So that now that the installation is complete, let's get ahead. We'll, be, we'll start with the coding. We have already installed, imported some libraries. Let me now import some Chroma DB specific libraries. Like, you know, um, like I was mentioning to you that, you know, uh, Chroma DB stores your embeddings. Now for you to create those embeddings, you need to have some sort of an embedding function, right? That you're going to call. How do you call, how do you use those embeddings within Chroma DB? There are, there are libraries provided. So there are modules provided. I'll just call chroma db dot utils dot. Let me just make this big, close the terminal. We don't need the terminal now. Embedding underscore functions. And we'll import open AI embedding function. So this is the function that open that chroma db has. Chroma db provides a lot of embedding functions and open AI embedding is one of them. Uh, you can use any embedding function the important trick here is that you know when you are ingesting data you are embedding them through some embedding um, uh, model using some embedding model when you're querying data back like you know you have to use the same embedding model otherwise those embeddings won't match and you will get very random results from you might not even get anything back right so um, before we do that let me just also uh, from dot env import dot env and find dot env and I'll just say load dot en load underscore dot env and just find the dot env and so this is uh, 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 what happened some error came path should be a string let's just see what what was the issue sorry this has to be a method yeah so now this is done uh, we'll import open ai embedding what you also need to do is you need to have like a dot env file and i'm going to show you my key and before i publish the video i'm going to disqualify this key what you need to have open ai underscore api underscore key that should be available in your dot uh, env file this is the this key will be used when chroma db goes out and uses the open ai embedding function to call the embeddings model within open ai right so it's going to make a call to open ai embedding and it will use your key um so so it's important you have the right key available in your dot env file find load dot env and find dot env is actually basically reading that file that's it it's not doing anything else so um, now that the open ai embedding function is uh, imported what we'll do is again a little bit of theory again uh, by default what happens is in chroma uh, data is stored in an ephemeral may, way right you know so it does not persist data by default and and the reason is chroma was built uh, offers this mode so that you know if you have you want to prototype scripts it's very easy for you to do that uh, it's easy to make chroma persistent so you can reuse every collection you create and add more documents to it later uh, by just calling the persistent client as i'll show you uh, when you do that it will load your data automatically when you start the client and save it automatically when you close it so it's a very useful feature i'm going to make use of the the persistent client method for this tutorial uh, within that so what we'll do is we'll first create we'll first figure out what is our current directory uh, we'll just say os.getcwd uh, this gives me the current directory uh, and now within the current directory, I want to create a data folder. So I'll say data folder path is os.path.join current there. And within that, I'll create a data, right? Data folder. Now with our, this thing done, this is where I want to store my chroma DB data, right? So I'm going to say client is equal to chroma DB dot persistent client. This is the uh, method that you need to call path is equal to data underscore folder path right so once i do this we'll see that you know a new data folder has come up here now this data if you look at it inside has chroma dot uh, sqlite 3 this is where your data is going to get stored uh, next with this our client is now set up we'll now define open ai embedding function and create a collection with it collection is think of it like you know a collection is for those of you who are not familiar with no sql Collection is like your table, right? If you if you have ever done a RDB, RDBMS, collection is like your table, right? So it will store all the data uh, that you have. So I'll quickly create uh, open AI underscore EF. This is my embedding function. And I'll call open AI embedding function. My API key is nothing but os.getenv. And this is where it will read using the python.env 
uh, module that we uh, called earlier, like imported earlier. We'll call collection is equal to client dot. Uh, you need to create client. Uh, you need to call create underscore collection method here. Uh, you have to give it a name. I'll give it a test collection. That's my name. Uh, and then you have to tell it. You have to give it what is the embedding function. So uh, let me just move this up. You have to give it the name. You have to give it the embedding function. So I'm going to say embedding function is equal to open AI EF. Um, so we are creating a collection here. We are saying, so the steps are you first create the client, then you create the collection. And before, when you create the collection, you have to specify the name of the collection and you have to specify the embedding function. Once your collection is ready, then you can go out and ingest data into the collection, right? So, so this will create the collection for us. Uh, if everything goes well, now you can see the test collection is is in uh, is uh, created. How do we go out and test whether this this actually got collect uh, created or not? You can call this method again. If the collection is already there, it will give an error, right? So let me just run the cell again. You see, I got an error saying collection test collection already exists, uh, right? So maybe what I'll do is I'll just change the name for. Um, there are methods I can. I'll talk about in a while. There is a delete underscore collection that can be called, uh, but I'm not calling it right now. Maybe I'll just create a new collection. I'll call it new hyphen collection. And let's just create this. And with this, now that collection has also got created. Let's just quickly list the collections. We created two collections in the process. Uh, let me just list the collections. Uh, you can list the collections by calling client. Within your client, you, you have to call list underscore collections. That's the method you need to call. And then once it's listed, you just print the collections. Right. So we can see that there are two collections that have got returned. Uh, new underscore collection and test hyphen collection. Right. So these are the two collections that have got um, that have got returned. So now that the collections are created, what we'll do is we'll retrieve a collection, right? So we created two collections. Uh, I'll retrieve a collection by calling get on my client. I'll call get underscore collection and I'll pass in the name of the collection I want to retrieve. And with that, I also, if you look at the method, it says embedding function. So I have to also declare the embedding function that I'm going to uh, use. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, when you are retrieving, you have to specify the same embedding function. Otherwise, it won't work. Uh, we'll give that OpenAI AF. With this, the collection is now retrieved and I can now go out and add items to the collection. So we can say collection dot, um, uh, the way to add things into the collection is very simple. What you do is you just call the add method on the collection and you pass in the IDs. So it has to be a list. If I am, let's say, passing ID 1, ID 2, let's say two objects, if I'm passing, I'll pass in two IDs and I'll also pass in the documents that I'm adding. So I can say this is doc 1 and this is doc 2 or I can just say doc 2, right? So I'll just push those there. Now, if I say collection dot count. I'll get back two, right? You know what that means is that there are two objects inside this collection. You can do now a collection dot get and pass in the IDs that you want to retrieve. Let's just say I wanted to retrieve only ID one. I can say collection one collection dot get IDs is equal to ID one and it'll give me the document back that's saying, hey, this document is doc one. See how it does not return the embeddings, right? So the embeddings is coming back as none. none. We haven't yet added any metadata, so we are seeing that list as none, uh, but no embedding was added. But in reality, there are embeddings. We are just not seeing it with this method. If I say ID1 and ID2, I'll get back two objects, right? So this is doc1 and doc2, right? So so this is, this is the get method. Uh, now, let's just say you want to do a... Um, let, let me just quickly run a function and add some random data. So random underscore ID uh, or let's just say ID text is equal to ID and uh, text is equal to this is text. That's it, right? Uh, this is text. And now I'll run a uh, function or uh, run a loop 
where I'll say for 1 to 12, uh, let's just do a collection dot add. I'm basically adding IDs and documents. Uh, IDs is ID underscore text uh, because I, I don't know, uh, GitHub Copilot was very, very quick. Uh, collection dot add IDs. I'm passing in the IDs and I'm passing in the documents. Uh, what I've done is I've just added some string to it so that we can do a quick collection add, right? Um, you will see because two IDs are already available it will give us some sort of a uh, skip message. So let's look at it, right? So it's saying add of existing embedding ID, ID one, insert of existing embedding ID, ID one. So it's saying, hey, there is probably something ID one and ID two already existing. There are ways to update that, but we'll get into it later. Now I can say collection.get and uh, give me ID one back. Let's just see what came back. It says this is doc one, so it's still showing the old one. Like right? if I did ID three, I'll see this is text three. ID four, uh, this is text four, right? So, so we are seeing that you know when I when I look at it um, for the new ones, I'm getting text one to text four, but for the old ones, it's still this uh, text. Uh, it's still the old one. I could have done collection dot. If let's say if I have to run this again, uh, and I want to do maybe a create or update. Then in that case, I can say collection dot absurd. And when I do absurd, it will just overwrite whatever is there. So it's like an update. It's like a create or update, right? So now when I do collection dot get uh, IDs is equal to and I'll just take all of them. You can see that, you know, we, we got all the IDs back. Uh, this is text one. This is text two, text three, text four. So it got updated. Everything got updated from text zero to text 12, 11. Um, so this is how your update works. The, we have done add to the documents. We have done uh, get of those documents. We have done some sort of an updating. If you want to quickly look at the first 10 items, you can call the peak method. This will also return embeddings. As you can see, we can see a lot of embeddings and then there is metadata. We have not yet touched the metadata part. And then there are a lot of those other documents, right? So, so this is about how can you go out, create a collection, uh, add items to the collection, retrieve a collection, um, update collections. So this is what we have done till now.